Hello all you cockadoodle dudes, this is Carla and I am here today in my kitchen with one of my favorite tall pot recipes, a delicious warming soup. Today I am making chicken soup for the soulless and the soul seekers. That is correct. I have a gorgeous chicken. I have a lot of beautiful aromatic ingredients. The chicken actually cooks into the base of the broth. So you poach the chicken in the liquid that then becomes the soup. Everybody simmers and gets shreddy and tender and delicious, topped with crunchy things and cold things and spicy things. And I think that this soup is very heartwarming in a very heartbreaking time. People ask me a lot how to make soups flavorful. And the secret to that is just having tons and tons of aromatic ingredients. One of the first ones I'm gonna throw in the pot is lemongrass. What you wanna do is kind of trim those dry parts. And then I'm just using the back of this cleaver to bruise the stock. And as soon as I do that, it like becomes juicy. So this is just a way to help release those essential oils and aromas and flavors. Fun fact about lemongrass, lemongrass is lipophilic, which means its flavor infuses into fat better than into water. So the whole chicken, the chicken skin, the chicken fat is gonna create that giving vibe, giving and receiving. So now that those are bruised, I'm just gonna cut into shorter lengths. We did just kill a mosquito in the kitchen, so I guess the citronella had not been activated. This pot has four quarts of just regular cold tap water. This is like a giant flavor bath of ingredients. Um, this is scallions. There's more scallions coming later. Copious amount of ginger, shallot, garlic turmeric, and star anise, or star anise, how do you say it? Another thing about this soup, which is really nice, is that you don't have to cook anything out. So the time in this recipe is gonna come from inactive simmering, during which you'll be like reading all sorts of uplifting texts, or sending angry mail to people that you need to complain to. Soulless, or the soul seekers, everyone is welcome but you just don't have to do much. The ingredients are gonna do their own thing. So I've also got half a bunch of cilantro. The other half is gonna be used for garnish. All right, so now the star of the show is the chicken. This is your ordinary whole chicken that you would buy for roasting. You don't have to have it in parts. In fact, it's better to have it whole because it'll take a little longer for it to cook. And during that cook time is where more flavor comes out. It's gonna get poached in this liquid starting from cold. So it's super gentle cooking method. That's gonna keep it like super juicy, super tender. And even though there isn't browning happening, all of the flavors in the soup base are gonna infuse into the chicken. So it's gonna be delightful. And I'm going to season kosher salt, measured amount, which is not the usual, and a good amount of black pepper. And that's it. This is ready to go on the stove and everything is gonna come up to heat and start cooking together. Now that the pot is at a simmer, I am just gonna go in and skim off any foamy bits. I'm not concerned about skimming fat. I actually want the fat to stay in the pot. So just any little gray bubbles or impurities can take those off, lower the heat to a low simmer now and let it cook for about 35 minutes to finish cooking the chicken through. The fun part of this soup is everything that you put on, in, and next to it. So I'm gonna pull these things out of the fridge now that will be toppers. So I've got sesame oil, fish sauce, hot sauce. I'm gonna grab some herbs, scallions, cabbage, and bean sprouts. And this way, everybody can doctor their bowl however they want. And I'll prep the raw things and then keep them cold while the soup is going. You're gonna just do some squeezies. Would you say that you are soulless or a soul seeker? My soul could use some thawing, I would put it that way. Like my soul needs to go to, on a tropical vacation and get 
just get warmed up again. But who doesn't need a tropical vacation? That chicken's kind of having a tropical vacation. It's in there with all those aromatics, all those delicious warming spices. You could use any kind of cabbage. You could use savoy. You could use regular green cabbage. You could use a cute little pointy cabbage. I really love purple for the color. You know, they say that cats will steal your soul, that you shouldn't sleep with a cat because they'll suck your soul right out of your nose. But I let my cat, my black cat, sleep with my first child in his crib. And guess what? His soul was not sucked through his nose, but my pediatrician, <laughs> did get mad at me. She just looked at me and she was like, don't do that. But she was kind of a cold hearted soul. Why would you do anything to these? These are incredibly beautiful. Beautiful Thai basil, pluck, pluck, drop, drop in your guy. There's a lot of things in my book that says that I don't do anymore. And that's what I want you to do when you read my book. You'd be like, why would I thinly slice that? And I would say, yeah, that was like a, a different version of me. And this version of me just wants sprigs. <laughs> oh, hi, Peg. She's here to suck my soul. Peggy, don't do it. Peggy, you don't really like scallions. <laughs> wow, cameo Peg. She saw Marge get that cameo in the other video, and then she arrived. Everybody gets a cameo this week. I just think it's funny that I talked about a black cat sucking a soul, and then who arrived to like affirm other black cats. That's some bean sprouts. I like the big crunchy guys. Now that the chicken has been going for 35 minutes, I want to pull it so it doesn't overcook. And any aromatics that kind of got dragged out, I'm just putting those back in the pot. So this mixture is chickeny and it's great. I'm going to let it reduce. It's going to become even more concentrated, more reduced, more infused, and more delicious but I don't want the chicken to keep going that entire time or it will become dry and stringy. I'm gonna wait until the chicken cools down a little bit. It'll be easier to handle and then I'll just be able to pull all of the meat directly off of the bones. While the chicken cools down, it's kind of the perfect amount of time to start soaking my rice noodles. Check the directions on the brand of rice noodles that you get. These are soaked in tepid water for about 45 minutes. Being awkward and <laughs> making a mess is actually hurting my soul. <laughs> After making a mess like that, I need some soul warming. Now that the bird is cool enough to handle, I'm going to remove the skin, the bones, and tear the meat into small pieces. You barely need a knife for this. One thing that I I'm like pleased and delighted about is sort of this texture of the chicken, like incredibly tender, pulled right off the bone. I'm just gonna pull it ultimately into shapes that like I want to find in my bowl of soup. They're gonna be these nice, really nice bites of chicken. Hi Peggy. Do you wanna use the chicken? Okay. Last little bits of chicken are shredded. This is definitely something I'm gonna save, stick it in the freezer and use it for another stock another day. The soup, I'm gonna taste it now for deliciousness. Super chickeny, spicy, gingery. All right, so I've got a strainer and a really big bowl. If you don't have a bowl this size, you can use a, a clean pot to strain. Ooh. It ends up being about three quarts of liquid, so when you're choosing your bowl or your other pot to go into, that's about how much space you need. So now I'm just pressing down on the solids to get the rest of the deliciousness out of them. Now this goes back in here. Obviously, if you had strained into a pot, you could just keep it in that pot and go back on the stove. In my honest and personal opinion, this tastes delicious, but it's like a little thin. My solve for that was to add a can of coconut milk, kind of on like a whim. It was like, give it a little sweetness, more fat. It just rounds out all of those flavors as like fatty ingredients often do. So in order to get these flavors to just get to know each other for a minute, I'm gonna put it back on the stove for five, just for them to have a chance to like do their thing, <laughs> meld. Chicken's going in, it's gonna heat through and it's gonna absorb more of these flavors. All right, I have gorgeous soup. I have my soaked noodles. 
And I'm making a bowl for me and a bowl for my other self, my higher self, which is which, we don't know. I think part of what is so pleasing about the soup is obviously it smells amazing. There's also been this like warm vapor traveling through the house today. And the color is also that like orangey hue. So it's like very warming. So if your soul is cold and, and dark or your heart is blackened and frozen, then maybe this little bit of warmth is also very, very nice. This version of myself is having basil, and this other version of myself is gonna have cilantro, and you tear the herbs and you smell all the smells. Mm. So I think this version of myself for crunch is a cabbage energy, and this other version is more sproutly and sprightly. A scallion is rooty and like getting, getting down there, so we need to be earthly. And then whimsical. Honestly, one of the best parts about the colder months is that citrus is in season. It's the only time of year where I'm really jealous, very jealous of the West Coast people. So yeah, useful vim and vigor that we get. This version is a little funky, a little fish sauce funk, maybe a little salty. This one is toasty and warm and more gorgeous color. Yeah, set your heart on fire. <laughs> and I'm gonna dollop, cause we should all like have a little plots and a little flair to ourselves. Two chicken soups for two kinds of souls. The soul that is cold but wants to be warmed and the soul that is warm and healthy and vimmed and vigored and whimsical and thought out. So yeah, I would never do this in the summer. You would never put something on your stove to simmer away for hours and have like hot steam going all the way through the house. But right now with a little like, I'm not saying I'm wearing tweed, but like a little tweed moment, a little cozy something, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. Mm. And yeah, if you're seeking a soul like in the bottom of a bowl of soup, then like you might, you might find it. You just might find it.